Getting back on track with making these just real brief videos that uh, talk a little bit about the lessons that we've done in class. So it's time for the lesson we did, which all of you remember probably that you got those bags and inside bags were items. So we were doing a trade lesson on that one day. It was a lot of fun to do with you guys. For us, we were learning this as core principle number four. I'm working off an older uh, version of my handout. So remember, remember core principle four is trade creates wealth, okay? That when you trade with people, when nations trade, when people trade, they are going to be better off in the long run and um, people prosper. That's the wealth. So how do you see something like that in class? How do you demonstrate something like that? Well, remember I created a situation in which you guys were living on a world and on that world there were two continents and on those continents were some villages, and you guys lived in those villages. In the beginning, you guys each had a bag that had an item in it that we said, you and your family, since the dawn of time, this is what you guys produce. And you could keep your item, or you could trade with somebody else. And we went through several rounds of trading. And remember, the more we traded, the more markets we had, and the more options that we were able to see. And that, of course, leads to right here, one of the great benefits of trade, having a wider variety of choices. If you're a thinking person, if you're an intelligent person, I think you would understand, if you look at a, an example like Sendix grocery stores, if our Sendix grocery stores in our state, if Wisconsin did not trade with any outside states or anybody else in the world, we only traded here in Wisconsin, that Sendix grocery store would look a lot different, wouldn't it? There would only be a few items in there that were from Wisconsin, like corn would be everywhere, and maybe strawberries in June. Maybe some cheese products, right? Milk, we wouldn't have to worry about that. But you wouldn't find things like citrus fruits, or you probably wouldn't find things like coffee or tea, because a lot of those goods come from other places. So... Just think about the benefits of trade. A wide variety of choices. It's awesome. We love it. Then another benefit of trade is that people have a higher standard of living. We define that down here, and I don't have that on this. I'm sorry. But we said it was a way to measure how people are living by looking at several different characteristics. One, if you look at the average income that people have in a country, you take the United States, like the average family income is around 50,000 US dollars, okay? That might, might not sound like a lot. I don't know if it does to you or not, but compare that to a country like maybe Rwanda, where the average family income might be, instead of 50,000, $785 for the year. Okay, there's gonna be a very big difference in, in how people live because people in Rwanda don't have a lot of money. You can also look at things like material possessions. Uh, we have no shortage, of, no shortage of vehicles in the United States. We got tons of different cars, SUVs, oh my gosh, Jeeps, I mean, come on. Electric vehicles, gas vehicles, we keep going. But if you go to a country like Rwanda, not everybody's driving a car. Or healthcare, we have doctors everywhere, oodles and oodles of doctors. Everywhere you look, there's like a little clinic on a corner place like Rwanda might have a doctor for the entire village. And then, of course, education. In Rwanda, they might have a college in the capital city. In the United States, I think we have thousands and thousands of colleges. So you can see standard of living is very different between those two places based on those characteristics. And why is that? Because the United States is a big supporter of trade around the world. There's more to it than that, but it's one of the big reasons. Take Rwanda, 25 years ago, they experienced genocide as one group there turned on another group, and it was like a civil war. Okay, it set them behind a little bit, lowered their standard of living. So I hope you had fun with that activity. When it was all said and done, remember we were writing down numbers, and um, I, I collected those cards from you or those uh, pieces of paper, looking at the numbers, the rankings people were giving, remember? We said we were going to determine the wealth 
from the rankings. And I said if you ranked something a one or two, you felt about it poorly, right? We're looking at wealth here. And if you gave it a four or five, you valued it more. And that's, so that's how we kind of saw that demonstration in class. When everything was done, uh, the value that people attached to items they had traded was greater than when they began the simulation and just had the item that they started with. And that just goes to show, it's just showing you trade creates wealth, even in a simple exercise like that. Okay.